Dear brothers and sisters, there is a sentiment that I want to immediately address that I think is on the hearts and minds of many people as we witness what is tragically unfolding in Gaza and in Palestine as a whole, in Palestine as a whole. And I want to mention the sentiment first so that you can understand ta'ala where we are going as we start to navigate through the seerah of the Prophet to a moment that really resembles the moment that I believe much of us are in right now and the way that so many of us feel. And that is when you look around, you're at work, you look at what your corporations are saying, you look at what your favorite celebrities are saying, you're looking at what your politicians are saying, you're watching sporting events, you are seeing friends that you have on social media, and they are spewing some of the worst propaganda against the people of Palestine that you have ever seen. And you think to yourself, I thought this was a good person. You think to yourself, I thought this is someone that understood the plight of Muslims. I thought that this was someone who would not fall for the stereotypical racist framings about the Muslim community. I thought this was someone that could analyze a little bit deeper than the hoaxes and the propaganda that are out there. And there is a sense of loneliness. And there is a loneliness there. There is an estrangement there. So I'm going to mention to you the last ayah which I feel like fits our moment right now. And inshallah ta'ala, we can take some of the lessons from it. People have gathered against you. Look, everybody is against you. There are too many people on the other side of that trench. So be afraid. Be afraid. Now, before we get there, there's something deeply profound about the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala built the character of the Muslims and built their spirituality to become more and more dependent on Him alone and to be able to face what it was like to be estranged. When you go through the Qur'an and you go through the momentous incidents that are referenced, first and foremost, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us in the aftermath of the battle of Badr, remember when you called upon your Lord and he answered you, I am going to support you with a thousand angels that will be followed by another thousand angels, the rows of angels that will come. Now here's the thing, if you're in Badr, this is your very first time experiencing what it is like to have that level of hostility, to be that outnumbered on the other side, to have that much more artillery on the other side. Everything is stacked against you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows them the angels descending upon them. They could actually see the malaika themselves coming down, lined up. The signs of the angels were all around them. And so they outnumbered them, the people on the other side, and they felt it. They felt it from the very beginning. They felt the push of the angels. They saw the effect of the angels on Quraysh. They saw every single moment of the battle that they were not alone, that they had divine support that was sent down to be with them. Now here's the thing. Couldn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have supported them without sending malaika? Couldn't, ha couldn't have been without the angels being visible to them? as these things unfolded before them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah did not show that to you, except as a glad tidings. And so that your hearts could find some ease. It did something for you. It did something for you to be able to see the angels coming down, the miraculous signs that you were not alone on the day of Badr. But at the end of the day, victory was only from Allah, it wasn't from Jibreel Victory was from Allah, it wasn't from all of the angels that He sent to you. At the end of the day, victory came from God. But Allah sent you that sign in that early journey of your Islam, of your faith, to let you know you're not as alone as you think you are. Now this last point that I want to get to in the Qur'an connects to the very first sentiment. And that is Khandaq, the battle of the trench. If there is any moment that resembles what is taking place with our brothers and sisters right now in Gaza, it is Khandaq. It actually is Khandaq. Because it is a time where a tactic was used to specifically starve off Medina, cut all supplies to them, to where even the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him himself, walks around malnourished. Imagine Jabir ibn Abdullah said, I saw the Prophet ﷺ walking around, he had stones tied to his stomach and he was bloated. Not the bloating after eating, the bloating of starvation. 
and it was 10,000 on the other side, 10,000 people that surrounded Medina from every direction, and they built this thin trench, only about three miles long. And between them and a massacre is this trench, and they are guarding every single point of that trench. They were under siege for an entire month. Khandaq was a month. And the Meccans cut every single element of food and drink from reaching them in Medina. And so their food was running out, their water was running out, and they couldn't take breaks. The sleep, the lack of sleep was getting to them. And as they are guarding every single form of that trench, they also come to know that there are enemies from within, that there are those that are plotting to attack them from behind. Imagine the ru'ah, imagine the fear that could penetrate you in those moments. And at that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna nasa, that verily the people, alladheena qala lahumun nas, the people, the naysayers, the hypocrites said to them, man, you guys are done. Look at you, a few desperate people at a trench, your leader, the Prophet sallallahu his stomach is poking out and bloated. Look at you, think you're gonna survive this? Be afraid, you have no chance. All of the Arabs are gathering against you and you're alone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what? Allah did not send them angels that time that they could look at visibly and see divine aid in front of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that that increased them in faith. That actually increased their faith. They were at a point in their spiritual maturity where when people said, look at all the people against you, it increased their faith. وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ He said, you know what? Allah is enough for us and He is the best of protectors. We've been with Allah long enough to know that Allah has not forsaken us. We are not afraid of the number on the other side. We are not afraid of the artillery. We're not afraid of the odds. There is nothing that you can say to shake us because we're a people of faith. We believe. We're not alone. We don't need to see 10,000 angels come down this time. We know that victory and help comes from Allah, that divine aid is on its way. Dear brothers and sisters, the people of Gaza are facing a genocide. It is a genocide that we have not seen the likes of for a very long time. And it is unfolding before the world's eyes. And the propagandists are doing everything they possibly can to hide the eyes of the American public, to hide the eyes of other people from that genocide, to justify it, to pollute. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, These are a people that are not hurt by those who betray them because they have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now here's the thing, we can be inspired as we should be when we look at the people in Gaza and we look at the people of Palestine who have shown time and time again that the odds don't matter. But let's bring it back to us. Dear brothers and sisters, you are not behind the trench. You're not being starved. You're not having the water taken away from you. We have not been tested the way they've been tested. Different people are tested in different ways. Now there are people that will continue to die in this entire process. And as they die in this process, guess what? Our dead are in paradise. We have no doubt about it. Every single one of our dead, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, that died on that ilaha Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah, that suffered in that cruelty and oppression, they're in paradise. Their victory has been attained. But then the people that are behind that trench and continuing to survive, and refusing to go away and us. If you look around and you feel alone and you feel like the odds are stacked, I want you to know that you have a responsibility. You might not be in the trench, but maybe you're one of the people on the outside of the trench that's trying to push people away, that's trying to make things easier for those behind the trench. Whatever platform you have, whatever voice you have, whatever money you have, whatever dua you have, when you use that for Allah, you are not alone. There are multiple fronts to this. It's not just the physical front of that trench. You have a responsibility and you have to do everything that you possibly can. And that is part of Iman, that's part of faith. This isn't politics, that's part of faith. And if people say, Inna nasa qad jama'u lakum, look, Palestine is a losing battle. Palestine is not a losing battle. 
Palestine will win, insha'Allah ta'ala. Palestine will win, Gaza will win, Al-Aqsa will be liberated. We have as much certainty in that as we do when we say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, that victory and help only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will win. They will win. When? When Allah wants it to happen. But it will happen. Palestine will win, insha'Allah ta'ala. Gaza will win, insha'Allah ta'ala. Al-Aqsa will be liberated, insha'Allah. And we will not let propaganda and the machinery of propaganda with all of its establishments and powers intimidate us. In fact, it should increase us in faith. Dear brothers and sisters, I remind you that anytime you hear of an opportunity or something shows its way, especially in this crucial time, support your brothers and sisters in Palestine. Do not be intimidated into not donating. Do not be intimidated into not using your voice. And do not forget to keep them in your dua. Your dua is the greatest tool at your disposal right now. Keep them in your dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free them and liberate them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala liberate Al-Aqsa and allow us to pray and free Al-Aqsa in our lifetimes.